I guess our courage came out of because we didn't have nothing, that we couldn't lose nothing. But we wanted something for ourselves and for our children. And so we took a chance with our lives. We marched up the steps with this circle of uh, soldiers with bayonets drawn. And uh, walking up the steps that day was probably uh, one of the biggest feelings I've ever had. I figured I had finally cracked it. My freedom is very much entangled with the freedom of every other man. So I'm fighting for my own freedom here. Are you scared? Yes, I'm very much afraid. Everyone here is. In a 10-year period, in the 1950s and 1960s, America fought a second revolution. It was fought in the South by black people and white. It was fought in the streets, in churches, in courts, in schools. It was fought to make America be America for all its citizens. These were America's civil rights years. I take it then that you are advocating Negroes in New York to stay out of these national chain stores. Oh no, that's not true. I'm advocating that American citizens interested in democracy I have thought for a long time that Negroes should be allowed to sit at the counters where we are served downtown. This is just a part of many things that I think they should be allowed to do. All the people of the South are in favor of segregation. And Supreme Court or no Supreme Court, we are going to maintain segregated schools down in Dixie. We're willing to be beaten for democracy, and you misuse democracy in the street. You beat Why people. Get out in front of the camera and go on. It doesn't matter being in front of the camera. Go it's a matter, on. On. It's a matter of facing it. your shirt yeah, yeah, and then hide your blows. Go on. It was a clear engagement between those who wished the fullness of their personalities to be met and those that would destroy us physically and psychologically. You do not walk away from that. This is what movement meant. Movement meant that finally we were encountering on a mass scale the evil that had been destroying us on a mass scale. You do not walk away from that, you continue to answer it. I always think of uh, what Matthew Jr. told me. And when he called, <laughs> When he called from the jail, he said, he said, be cool, mother. <laughs> and that was very uh, trying, and yet it was amusing, too. <laughs> He's telling me to be cool at this point. come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience. And that will be a day not of the white man, not of the black man. That will be the day of man as man. It was a hard fight, challenging America's basic beliefs. What is an inalienable right? What is equal treatment under the law? What is liberty and justice for all? It was a hard fight, but the prize was freedom, and no American could afford to lose. Much of this century, 
America was segregated. It was our social system, our way of keeping blacks and whites apart. By custom and by law, most blacks were servants, laborers, tenant farmers, went to separate poorer schools, lived in separate poorer housing. Segregation was the context for black lives throughout the country, but especially in the South, a complete environment, socially and psychologically. Listen, for a long time, I had the idea that a man with white skin was superior because it appeared to me that he had everything. And I figured if God uh, would justify the white man having everything that God had put him in a position to be the best. If you're born into a system that's wrong, whether it's a slave system or whether it's a segregated system, you take it for granted. And uh, I was born into a system that was segregated and uh, denied blacks the right to vote, also denied women the right to vote. And uh, I took it for granted. Nobody told me any different. Nobody said it was uh, strange or unusual or wasn't like other states. Segregation had its rules, and Southern blacks knew that if they didn't obey them, if they didn't step aside to let a white man pass, or if a black man looked too closely at a white woman, the system could be enforced by violence. Groups like the Ku Klux Klan used terrorism to uphold white supremacy and were an ever-present symbol of intimidation. But there were always blacks who fought against segregation. Many ministers preached equality, and black unions and organizations like the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People worked for it for decades through speeches, demonstrations, and court cases. II had an enormous impact on black hopes for change. Black Americans fought and died in a segregated U.S. Army, but they saw a larger, unsegregated world. They saw their own power as they fought and as some were trained as officers and specialists. And they came back with a new sense of themselves. I spent three years overseas in New Guinea, and I became an officer during that period. I had been eager to exercise authority. So when we got out, uh, it was just one more step to say, well, look, we aren't going to take this anymore. <laughs> the South they came back to was determined to resist change. And most of the nation was not ready to hear black demands for justice. Then in the early 1950s, after years of carefully planned litigation, the NAACP brought these demands to the Supreme Court. The test cases were set in schools. On May 17, 1954, the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in Brown versus Board of Education that segregated schools were unconstitutional. It called into question the whole system of segregation. It was a, quite a shock to Southerners to be told that the way they had been running their affairs for many, many years were no longer acceptable to the nation as a whole. And a great many of, of the older crowd of white so Southerners felt that they had, they came of an ancestry that were founders of the Republic and they knew the uh, Constitution and customs and laws of the country as well as anybody else. 